Ten minutes now to 8 o'clock, mostly sunny today with a high near 22 degrees. So tell me something, when you hop on the subway, perhaps later this morning, how do you know you've reached your stop? You know, you look out the window or you look at that map above your seat. But what if you couldn't see those things? David Lepofsky is a Toronto lawyer. He's visually impaired, and he's been campaigning to get the TTC to announce the upcoming stops. He's on the line this morning. Also on the line is Jerry Broly. He's General Manager of Service Delivery for the TTC. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Lepofsky, uh, before you tell me exactly what you want the TTC to do, how in the world do you know now whether you've reached your stop? Well, the best you can do if you're blind like uh, myself is that you try to memorize the number of stations, try to keep a head count, hope nobody starts talking to you while you're on the train uh, so you don't lose your count. Um, And if you're doing a new route, uh, particularly, say, a long trip along the Danforth line where there are many stops, uh, it can be quite a challenge, and frankly, you can make mistakes. So it's not uncommon for you to uh, lose your way? Um, I wouldn't. I travel a sufficiently short route enough of the time that it's not frequent that I make mistakes. But um, you have to engage in a high level of concentration uh, and uh, hope that you don't have one of those uh, lovely CB, uh, TTC breakdowns where you're standing at one stop for a long period of time. As you try to keep in mind your count. Exactly. I mean, there's no other passenger on the TTC uh, who has to spend their time memorizing and counting stations, uh, except those of us who are, who are uh, blind. Now, what exactly do you want the TTC to do? Well, what I'd like to do is actually quite simple, common sense, and I'm sure to your listeners, uh, obvious. Uh, each CB- each uh, TTC train is, has a driver. Uh, each driver has a PA system uh, and a microphone, so I'd like them to simply do what's done in New York, in Washington, Uh, in Boston and many other cities, I'm sure, which is the driver, as they come to each station, simply pick up the microphone and say, Lawrence Station, next stop. I think that that would be of great assistance not only to um, blind passengers like myself, but uh, to sighted passengers uh, as well. Mr. Burley, why not? Uh, We don't disagree with the the intent here and certainly have supported uh, that and are working towards achieving that end of having the stations announced. Uh, we have a program in place uh, now to uh, uh, purchase and install a station announcement program. The reason uh, we are uh, concerned about using the suggestion that Mr. Leprovsky has uh, suggested that the, the guard or motorman make the announcements is the quality of the announcement that we get. The equipment that's on the train is a multi-purpose. It's used for uh, conversing with transit control, our, our, our main control center, and also for guard uh, motorman conversations. Uh, the system is uh, designed in the 60s, it is, it is uh, running out of its uh, useful lifespan. The quality announcements in the trains are, are not uh, what they should be, and uh, we have uh, found that uh, having the guard try and use that to make station announcements uh, does not provide a consistent or quality message to the, to the customers. In fact, we're in a process now of uh, upgrading the public address speakers on the trains, uh, one and a quarter million dollars, uh, which should be completed next year, which will give us some improvement in that area. And we have a uh, $4.6 million program uh, in place to uh, to develop a station stop announcement program okay. over the next couple of years. We covered a lot of ground there. Let me uh, take them in, in parts, yeah. starting with quality. What, what do you mean quality? That people can't understand when, uh, when, they, when the uh, operator says what the next stop is or just that it doesn't sound like uh, your top of the line CBC announcer? Uh, no, it's that the the, the train line, uh, the, the, the announcement has to run from one car through a series of uh, train lines to get to the other cars. The speaker systems are not designed for constant public address or for emergency announcements. Uh, the quality is not always good from one car to the other. The volume is difficult to control, so it, it gets it's louder in one car than in another, and the uh, the entire process of making that announcement results in a in a very poor quality uh, announcement on the train. Mr. Lepofsky, um, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but everybody who's listening, who's ridden the TTC and has heard announcement on the car, uh, knows that the PA system is certainly clear enough that an announcement could be made that's understandable, and while it not, might not be the high-tech audio that we would all love to get, all we want to know is what station we're at, and it's not unreasonable to say, use what you've got. The fact of the matter is is that uh, uh, I've been advised that they're looking at spending, I gather from these figures, millions to buy some new whiz-bang high-tech system, which 
if they want to spend that money to get automated computerized announcements um, uh, they can go ahead but I understand it's going to be at least a year if not two years till all of that's in place um, and in the meantime they've got the drivers they've got the microphones and with respect uh, to the fellow from the TTC the speakers seem to work well enough they sure work well enough to tell us all to pile off the train at Eglinton when they're switching trains or whatever. They could, I'm sure, work well enough uh, to let us know what, what station we're at. Um, and I don't really think it's a fair answer to blind and visually impaired people in Toronto who rely heavily on the TTC since we don't drive uh, ourselves to say, well, they may not be the best quality of announcements in the world, but they're going to be intelligible. Um, so, uh, but we're not going to do it just because it's not good enough quality. Mr. Broly, this new system that Mr. Leposky talked about, he said he understands it could be a year or two. Uh, when exactly would be this, uh, this new automated system in place? Well, we are currently looking at uh, sometime in uh, late 96 or 97. 97? Yeah. Why would it take, what, three years to do that? Because if we have a very large system, uh, and in order for it to, to work, we have to have the equipment at the track level and so forth to verify the train's location before the stop announcement is made. Uh, we also have to uh, retrofit the fleet with the equipment, and we have over 600 subway cars that are in service daily, and so we have to do them uh, a few at a time. So it takes a considerable amount of time to design, purchase, and install the equipment on the on the trains. Matt, my uh, response to that would be simply, uh, they can take as much time as they, they wish to put in this whiz-bang, top-of-the-line stuff if they feel that's the way they want to do it. But in the meantime, uh, what they're doing right now, uh, in my view, violates the Human Rights Code. The Human Rights Code guarantees that uh, services and facilities like the TTC must be provided uh, equally to people uh, notwithstanding their disability. Uh, I have a disability, and part of the guarantee of human rights under the Human Rights Code is they have a duty to accommodate the needs of people with disabilities up to the point of undue hardship. Uh, I think that a reasonable accommodation would be in the interim while they spend their two to three years figuring out how to put in one of these multi-million dollar systems. And by the way, I'm not asking for them to put in a multi-million dollar system. I'm, I myself am contented with the good old PA system that's there now. Uh, but in the meantime, there's no undue hardship. There's no hardship at all in just picking up that microphone. You don't have to lay in any additional staff or whatever. Just, uh, just get on with it. And I just want to bring something up before I let both of you go. Sorry, sorry, David. Uh, Mr. Broly, did you not say, though, that you're in the process of upgrading the PA system now before you get to this, uh, what's been called the whiz-bang system? If you're going to do that, why can't you just then have the operators in the meantime make their announcements on the new improved PA system? Well, we could certainly uh, test that, that thesis. We did test the announcements a number of years ago in the subway in conjunction with the CNIB and... Uh, after about a month, we had to pull it off because of uh, the number of complaints we were receiving regarding the announcements and the, the problems they, with the system. So they we actually, did test this. So this is not a untried uh, suggestion. We did try it several years ago. They tried it in the uh, 70s, um, and then when they pulled it off because of customer complaints, and I might add, nobody explained to the customers why the announcements were being made. I think the good people of Toronto, if they knew that even if the system's imperfect, if the announcements are being made to accommodate the needs of blind people uh, on the, and visually impaired people, I'm sure that the good people of Toronto would, would be quite uh, willing to accept those announcements. Uh, it was a matter of TTC not, uh, I think, adequately explaining it. But back then in the 70s, it's my recollection that they then said, when they pulled them off, that they were going to look into alternatives. It's now been uh, over 10 or 15 years, and I think it's frankly um, long enough. We don't need to wait for all this on, new equipment. On that note, I'm going to have to wrap it up. I want to thank you both, and I know we'll hear more about it as Mr. Lepofsky goes to the Human Rights Commission. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye. David Lepofsky is a Toronto lawyer. He's also blind. Jerry Broly is general manager of service delivery for the TTC. Here's Jim Kern.